Hello everybody, good morning. Welcome back to another plant chores video. It is Monday morning, 8.21 a.m. and I'm probably gonna be doing plant chores throughout the day, so I'm just gonna film whenever I'm doing something. I'm filming a few different videos today, so yeah, I'll just be picking up the camera and taking you along with whatever plant chores I tackle. I actually made a big master list of plant chores that I would like to get done this spring. I like to do this um, with every new season, just kind of walk around all of my plants and look and see what needs to be done. So this is what I'm working with when it comes to that list. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna choose and what all we're gonna be doing, but I do know that I need to water my moss poles right now. So we're gonna start off with that. Also, it's a really gloomy day and it's pretty dark. So I'm sorry about that. It's been so just cloudy and gray out lately, but the show must go on, you know? So um, bear with me when it comes to the lighting. I can't wait until the sun comes out again, but for now, we just have to work with this. I usually water my moss poles every second day. I've found that that kind of works best for me to catch them before they go bone dry. So I watered them on Saturday, didn't water them yesterday, now it's Monday, I have to water them again. Not all of them will need to be watered usually, like especially the closed back ones can usually go a few days, but I like to at least check all of them every second day. So I've got my watering can here, it's all full of water, and I've started using mosquito dunks to try to eradicate the fungus gnats that have been hanging out around here lately. So the mosquito dunk has been soaking in here overnight. They don't need to be soaked for that long, but I've just been keeping a bunch of water on hand with them soaking so that whenever it comes to watering time, I'm prepared. I've got a couple of four liter um, like water bottles like this that have mosquito dunks. These also have my fertilizer water in, so I have two of those for whenever I need to water. And then I just fill them up so the mos mosquito dunks can start soaking the next batch of water. I'm trying to get trying to get a system going here. Anyways, right now I'm just gonna be using this water to fill up this little squirt bottle for my moss poles. Oh, <laughs> I just squirted out into my sink. I'm gonna start in my bedroom. There's actually not as many moss poles in here as there used to be. And this one for my varicosum, I haven't even been keeping it wet because nothing's attached to it yet. So I don't really need to use it yet. Once I get some vines attached, I can probably attach that one soon because I like to have these like caterpillar bits attached. Once something's attached, then I'll be keeping it moist. But for now, I just don't really care that much. Um, but over here for my philodendron majestic, Oh my god, you guys. This, I put these fungus gnat things out yesterday because, like I said, I'm trying to get on top of this fungus gnat issue I've been having. This literally caught a mealybug. What the heck? I did not even know I still had mealybugs in here. Um, oh my gosh. Oh my god, never mind. It's literally just... <laughs> It's literally just the frayed edge of this. I thought it was a mealybug. I was like, how the heck did that happen? Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Okay, anyways, just gonna set that up there. Oh, my monster elbow's starting to root. Do you see that? Wait, is that my elbow or is that the campo? Oh, it's the campo. Never mind. Still exciting, but I was like, holy crap, that happened fast. It's only been in water for like a week. That's actually really good because I can't wait to pot those campos up. Anyways, okay, so my philodendron majestic. Oh, it's still like a little moist, but I am gonna touch it up. This is the one that I extended recently. This is my only thickly pole that has an extension on it, and so far I'm super happy with it. Like, it's very sturdy, working amazingly, and my majestic is so happy. Look at that new leaf right there, and then another one emerging, and look at how beautiful. Like, oh my goodness, that's gonna be such a nice leaf. Anyways, I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit, like I said, so I'm just gonna spray some of the water in there. I like to kind of feel the different parts of the pole, so I'll feel down here and see if it's still moist, and it is, so 
that's good. I don't have to be like too concerned about putting a ton of water in here, but yeah, I'm just gonna put a little bit just to kind of make sure it doesn't dry out by the next time I'm checking. And then over here, my philodendron, I guess El Guapo now is the name, um, also has a moss pole, so the leaf is like right against it. So I've just got to kind of squeeze in here and do it. I just shot some water into this air layering plastic wrap. We might actually chop this today. Maybe that will be one of the chores that I do because as you can see, it's rooted and yeah, it just needs to be chopped. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the moss pole on this one as well. Oh, this is my serpents. Did I even say that? I don't know, but this is a new leaf on that guy. I actually really enjoy going around and watering my moss poles in the morning. I find it pretty relaxing. Okay, I need to go refill. I really want to order the one liter version of this bottle because this one just, I use it so quickly and I have to go back and forth so much. This is just the 500 mil one. I've been meaning to order the 1000 mil one liter one from Amazon, but I just haven't done it yet. Look at the baby. Oh, monkey, she's got her paw over her nose, so cute. Won't bother her. I will also go around and just touch up any plants that might need a drink. Um, so for example, this streptocarpus here has been really thirsty. I've honestly been watering it probably every couple of days because it's in the process of pushing out flowers. Oh my gosh, like how cool is that? But yeah, it's been really thirsty. I watered it yesterday, so I don't need to do it today, but I just checked on it and it's still okay. This ficus gets really thirsty too. It needs to be repotted. Um, I might just give that a little shot of water as well. I just do a little touch up just for in between waterings. I think that these poles are pretty good in here now, so I'm gonna head out to the living room. Okay, and then we're coming over here. So this is where I have a lot of poles in this living room area. And I recently extended my Philodendron Splendid's pole. So it's quite massive now. It's probably about five feet tall. So let's see how dry it is. So it's not completely dry, but it's pretty dry. So I definitely have to water this one. And look at him. He's putting out a new leaf on that vine. And then he's also, need my other hand, putting out a new leaf on the other vine as well. So really exciting. I usually just take off the lid of this squirt bottle and kind of dump the water into it. But since this is just a little bit on the drier side, I'm kind of just spraying it down first so that it will absorb the water better or else it will just bead down the sides. And it'll be a big mess if I just try to dump a bunch of water on it right now. I actually have a spare, oh, you can't even see it, a spare pot, let me grab it. I put my painted lady into that tattoo planter. So now I have this spare pot. And I want to try it on my Philodendron Splendid because this plant is just so much more unstable now that I extended the pole. So I think I'm going to pull things out of here and then try it in this pot to see if that will help. Okay, no, it doesn't work. This is way too big and it was just unsteady in it. So I'm just gonna put this pot away with all my other extra big pots that I'm not using right now. The Trifolia ones are so easy. I literally just fill this up with some water and then it drains down into it.
Okay, I'm doing my philodendron narrow, which is so rooted in here. So I definitely have to do this one every two days because it just absorbs so much of the water. But I wanted to give you a little update. So it has this new leaf coming out here. Um, and it also has this, which I thought was a new growth point when it first started emerging. But somebody commented on my April updates video and they said, that's a bloom. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I got up and I ran to this plant and yep, sure enough definitely looks like a bloom coming in which is just so crazy because you know this plant was like a one leaf cutting not too long ago so just the fact that it's grown so much in such a small amount of time that it's mature enough to be blooming now is just crazy so yeah i love this plant so much y'all already know i'm gonna give him a little drink This plant is going to look so crazy whenever it comes time to extend this. Like, imagine how big it's going to be once it crawls all the way up here. Okay, it's getting a little bit brighter in here, which is nice. Um, just finished watering all of the moss poles and touching up all of the plants that needed a little bit of water. Um, I'm going to film another video now. also need to eat some breakfast. So I'll pop back in when I'm doing the next plant chore. Okay, I'm back. I just filmed a video and now I'm back to do some more plant drawers in between. So I have my philodendron gigas here, which has been one of my absolute favorite plants lately. I know I've gone on and on about this and I've been posting photos of it everywhere, but it's just so pretty. I can't get over this newest leaf. It's working on another leaf. Looks kind of stuck, but hopefully it will just sort itself out. Anyways, this needs an extension. That's something that's on my plant chores list. I just kind of went through some of the like first things that are on that big spring plant chores list and I saw Extend Philodendron Gigas and it had a star by it because it's something that I want to do right away because obviously it's getting close to the top of the pole here. Anyways, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it today because this is on a North Shore Tropicals closed back pole and I don't have any extensions. Like I don't have any more of these on hand. Um, but I do have these new thickly small, um, small size grow poles and I just thought I would try to put one together and then see if it would fit this one and I think that it does. So I'm going to try to use this thickly extension on this one. Like it honestly fits pretty well, I think. So we're going to try to do that. I'm going to take some of the moss out of the top here so that I can pop it in gently because there might be some roots up here. Yeah, it feels like there's definitely roots there, which is good. I just don't want to wreck any of them. This is why now I'm not filling my poles up to the very top because when you extend them, you want a little bit of space at the top without moss. I honestly don't think I can take that much out of this one. It feels like it's like pretty rooted in there. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to pop this on. Okay, I think that's pretty good. It's not gonna be the cleanest look because obviously this is two different styles of poles, but I think it's fine and I just kinda wanna use what I have on hand right now. Just gonna fill it up, which is the fun part. Oh, it's gonna be a bit trickier, I think, with this small pole though, doing it this way. such a narrow opening.
Okay, okay, so this is what it looks like. I don't think I'm going to be extending this one again. I think I'm going to end up chopping it once it gets to the top of the extension. So I did fill it pretty much all the way up. I'm hoping that I'm going to see a leaf size increase by the time it gets to the top so that I can propagate it and start it over again. Um, because yeah, I just love this one so much. So he has lots of room to grow now. I'm hoping that's still going to fit in the cabinet. I think it will. Let's go try. Yes, it does. It's actually like perfect. Look at that. It fits perfectly. Oh, that's so awesome. All right, great. I'm so excited to see the new growth on that one. Okay, next I've decided that I do want to go ahead and take my cutting of my philodendron serpents today. Um, we have this air layering going on. It's rooted in here, and I just need to cut right below that and then pot this up. So I don't even have my pot or my potting mix or anything out. I'm just so excited to take the air layering off and see what's going on. Let's do that first, and then I'll get the rest of the supplies. Okay, so let's take some of this Velcro off. I usually use elastic bands for my air layering because it just works a lot better, but I think I didn't have any, so that's why I used this plant Velcro. But it worked fine, honestly. Okay, I'm gonna unwrap it. The big reveal. Oh yeah, it's really wet because I watered it this morning too. But that's good, it'll be easier to get the moss off. Okay, I guess I'm gonna cut it and then we can kind of take the moss off and everything. I see lots of roots in here, so I'm not worried. Okay, we're gonna do a snippy snip. This is the first time I've ever propagated this plant, which is pretty cool. Ready? Oh, oh my goodness. There we go, there's our cutting. One leaf, but has a juicy caterpillar too. And I hope that this just kind of keeps giving me this size leaf. Like this is like, it's not a huge leaf, but it's a decent size, it's like a mid-sized leaf. So I hope that it keeps continuing with that since I've done the air layering. Um, I mean, it will have a bit of an adjustment period, I'm sure, but the reason that I like to air layer is to try to maintain as much of the maturity as possible because it doesn't have to put so much energy into creating new roots when you chop. So yeah, you can see there's pretty good roots on this already. I'm gonna peel off the moss. Okay, I think that's pretty good. There's actually a lot of secondary roots on here, which makes the moss even harder to remove, but we got most of it off. Um, so I think I'm pretty happy with this, honestly. And we can go ahead and pot it up like this. Having a little bit of moss left on isn't gonna hurt your plant to pot it up like that. I always just try to remove as much as I can without damaging roots. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use this clear pot right here. Put some of my potting mix in it. Don't ask me why I'm not using a potting mat right now. I don't know. <laughs> There's one on the counter behind me, but for some reason I didn't bring it over here. Okay, so I just filled it up with some of my mix and then I'm just going to, oh, it has a pretty long stem. I don't know if that's gonna fit in here, we'll see. I think I'm gonna have to cut some of that stem off. 
This always happens to me. Okay, I'm just gonna cut it like right here probably. Oop, that should be fine. Now it's gonna fit a lot better in here. There we go. So the roots are about there, plenty of space for them to grow down. Okay, so I wasn't gonna do a moss pole. I was just gonna leave it for a while, but I decided I might as well just pop a pole in there with it right now. So I threw together one of my thickly poles. This is just like the regular size one with the four um, holes in it. And I think I'm actually going to try doing the plastic wrap around the node um, method that I see her plant stories Becca do because I've noticed that serpents has had a lot harder of a time rooting into moss poles than my other philodendrons so I figure that this is a good time to kind of implement that and see how it goes so I'm gonna go grab actually I have this I wonder if I can reuse it I'm gonna go rinse it and see if I can re maybe reuse the plastic that we use for the air layering Okay, it's pretty wet, but let's just see, see how this goes. Okay, so, just gonna put it around there. If it was dry, I would probably just tape it, but since it's wet, I think I'm going to use my garden Velcro to secure it for now. I think that that's pretty good though. That'll probably help. Okay, put some of this around. This is such a good idea. I feel like it's gonna help. I'm excited to see if this guy starts rooting in. Okay, so this is the final result. I'm actually really happy with this and really excited to see how this does in this setup. I haven't completely cracked philodendron serpents. I find it to be one of my more difficult philodendron to grow, so we'll see how this goes. Um, I did put another piece of plastic just kind of lightly around below the caterpill here, so we'll see if I'll be able to get roots in that one as well. And yeah. That's how it's looking. As for the mother plant, I'm probably gonna chop it up and try to propagate those cuttings as well and then maybe eventually add them into here. I just knew I wanted to, for the top cut, do the air layering, so I'm glad that I did that. No idea how difficult or easy the rest of the cuttings are gonna be to root without doing air layering, but I guess I'll find out. Anyways, I'm gonna go eat some lunch now, probably walk Olive, um, maybe film a different video I'm not sure what order I'm doing things in, but I do know I'm very hungry right now, so I'm gonna go make tacos and I'll be back whenever I'm back. Okay, I'm back. And the next thing that we're gonna be tackling is adding these Hoya Matilde cuttings into my mother Hoya Matilde. Look at how beautiful it is. I'm so happy with how this Matilde is looking ever since I chopped and just like thinned out the bottom half. It's looking so much more like what I wanted it to. And yeah, it's just so healthy and gorgeous. Like these big dark leaves are just so stunning. So yeah, I think that most of these have roots on them. If, where is it? There we go. If you can see there. So um, yeah, we're gonna be popping those in. This is actually the perfect time for me to be adding cuttings in here because I just watered my Hoya Matilde yesterday and I used to always add cuttings in when the plant was dry and then I'd water them in after, but I've since realized that it's so much easier to do it when the soil is moist because you can actually make a hole and the soil like stays, like it stays like a hole. 
You know what I mean? Like the soil's not just all falling into it like it does when it's dry. You can't really make a hole in really dry soil because it's so crumbly. But now, like I already have a perfect little hole to put one of the cuttings in. So I've been adding my cuttings into wet soil now. And then it's already wet. You don't have to water it after or anything. It works really well. Oh my goodness, this was one that was just a vine that I put in just to see if it would root. And it actually is rooting which is crazy. Um, I'm gonna save that one and maybe put it in at the end if there's room, but let's grab one with some leaves on it, like this one. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? Oh wow. Okay, there's so many, there's so many roots. It's like rooted up so high. Oh my goodness, I think I'm gonna have to remove some of these leaves. Okay, I'm just gonna cut some of these lower leaves off. They're like entangled in the roots. Oh boy. There we go. Boom. The other side. That should be good. Let me see. I think this is like the most rooted cutting that I've put into here. Okay, I guess that's like, you know what I might do? I might just cut this off. I might just do that because it's gonna be so much easier to pot. Okay, <laughs> we didn't really need both root systems anyways. It'll be fine with just this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into the hole. Make sure that most of the roots are covered as much as possible. There we go. Um, next. Oh my goodness. I really was not expecting these cuttings to be so rooted. Like, oh my goodness. They were un completely unrooted pretty much like a few weeks ago. So that just happened really fast. Probably because, you know, we're getting more into spring now. The rooting is just speeding up. Oh man, these ones are like stuck together. Wait, or is this all one? Is this all one thing? Or is it two? No, it's two. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead with this one, I guess. There's even new growth on this one. Look at these new fresh leaves and a new vine right there. Like, oh my goodness. Okay, I feel like I'm gonna need a bigger hole for this one now. I honestly don't even know if I'm gonna be able to fit it in here. I'll try, but. These roots are massive. I'm gonna try to like point them downwards. So we're gonna finish up this task and then we are going to um, take a cutting of my philodendron dark lord. I'm wanting to start that plant over. It's just not looking great. So um, I wanna start it over so I can grow it out nicely. 
because it finally came out with like a nice decent sized leaf. So I'm gonna chop that one off and take some propagations. Is this as deep as it wants to go? Okay, I guess so. I don't wanna break it. It's pretty good actually. Most of the roots are under there. Okay, I honestly feel like I don't know if I can fit the rest of the cuttings because this is all roots here. This pot's getting pretty full. So it's getting pretty full of cuttings and just like of roots. I feel like this is honestly gonna need to be repotted in no time because it just roots so well. So I might just get like a small pot to do the rest of, oh, actually maybe we can just try the vine just for fun. I want to pot the vine in. It's really small, so I should just be able to sneak it in somewhere. I'll just make a hole right there and then sneak the vine down, boom. Oh my gosh, there's a tiny baby leaf coming in on it. <gasps> I didn't even see that. That's so cute. Okay. Let me try to find another pot now. Okay, so I'll pot these up and then I guess I'll just use them for like trades or I don't know, selling them it maybe. Um, but it's gonna actually make a cute little pot. Matilde grows so fast. Like this is honestly one of the best Hoya. Mine started from just a small cutting that somebody sent me. Um, somebody on Facebook, I like bought it off of them. I really want the splash one. They're just expensive to get right now. So I haven't got one yet, but I would love to have like the silver splash version. Okay. Okay, so that's gonna be that. And I'm probably just gonna pop this back on my windowsill where the propagation vessel has been hanging out. Um, put this big mama back and then we'll do a little choppy chop to the philodendron dark lord. Just wanted to take a moment to admire her. Look at how stunning she's looking like. Oh my goodness. I love this Hoya so much. Oh my goodness, the first sliver of sun all day is coming out. That's so nice. Um, I'm gonna sit right in it. So, oh, it's leaving, okay. So I have my Philodendron Dark Lord here, and this is the new leaf I was talking about. It looks so nice, and it's so much bigger than the other leaves. So this is gonna make a beautiful top cut. So I'm gonna be cutting there, and then I'll probably take, I'll probably take three cuttings from this. And then I'm thinking I'll just leave the bottom cut, and then maybe the Silver Sword and the Dark Lord will kind of be able to grow at a similar rate that way. So, because I, I really like having this mixed pot, but the Dark Lord's just so much bigger than the Philodendron Silver Sword. So let's just chop them back. I'm gonna do one cutting there. Oh, it's just so beautiful. I can't get over that leaf. And then two cuttings. That's gonna be the second one. And three cuttings is what I want. So that's the third one. And I'll probably just reuse this, honestly. Well, I'll rinse it out and everything first, obviously, but yeah, I'll probably just use that vessel. And then this, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it like this, I guess. See what happens, let these grow out a little bit more. Okay, here's the fresh water. Oh, it's still got some algae, but that's okay. It is fresh water, and I did put a drop of Super Thrive in there as well to help with the, oh my goodness. <gasps> I forgot that the um, like sap in here is red. I just put it in and it looked like, it looks like beet juice or something coming out of it. Maybe you can see when I put this one in. 
Oh my gosh, it's so cool. I don't know if you can see on camera. It looks like there's like red food dye in here. Food color, food dye, is that what it's called? Food coloring. And this one, big one, there we go. Very fun. Oh yeah, look, it's like got its juices on my potting mat. It's so pink, it's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna let this guy um, root probably just along that south windowsill in my bedroom again, because I don't know, it seems to be pretty happy in that spot anyways. And I'll be keeping an eye on this. I've never propagated this plant before, so it's always fun to, um, you know, do an experiment with a new plant. I'm sure that it's going to root up easily. I don't really have any concerns about that. Philodendron, philodendron like this that aren't like velvet or anything are usually pretty hardy, so I'm excited to be starting the journey of growing this into a nice plant and just kind of giving it more love and attention than I have been giving it because I think that this is gonna be really nice once I can get some big leaves on it. If I could have a mixed pot of like a big Dark Lord and a big Silver Sword, that would be so ideal. I would love to have that. One day, one day. Okay, I have to do some cleaning up in my kitchen because it's a disaster from both plant things and just like my lunch. Um, like I said, did I say this? I can't keep track because I've filmed so many videos today. I've filmed three videos today, plus I'm vlogging in between. So I've just, it's been a busy one. So I need to clean this up and then I think I'm gonna do some plant watering. So I'll probably take you along for that and we'll end the video with a nice little watering session. Okay, I'm back. It's a little bit later in the evening and I'm just gonna water a few plants before I close out this video. Starting off with my staghorn fern. This is a plant that I really, I've been saying this for a while, but I really want to learn how to take care of it better and just be more committed to caring for it and not letting it get like so crispy dry all the time because I do really want to grow this out to be a nice plant. I think that they're so cool. I only have the one obviously, but there's so many different cool varieties and yeah, I just want to kind of master this one and then, and then we'll see. Um, but yeah, it's thirsty, so I'm going to be giving it a drink. Whoop. Oh my gosh. See? I'm losing fronds left and right. This poor thing. I've just got my fertilizer water in here, so I'm going to be pouring it over and just kind of like drenching the whole thing. For a long time, it wasn't getting enough light, and that's kind of why it wasn't doing well, but now it's getting enough light because it's under my soul tag light, but um, I haven't been keeping up with watering as much, so especially since the season's been changing to spring, I've just, I keep falling behind on it, so I'm trying to catch up and just keep up with it a little bit better. I was also considering remounting this plant because... I don't know, it's so hard for me to find information on these. Like, is it fine on this piece of cork forever? Am I supposed to remount it? Like, I honestly have no idea. So I was thinking about doing that, but I don't know if I'm gonna do that anymore because, I don't know, I don't wanna disturb it if I don't, I don't know what the right move is. So if you have any information on that, please let me know. But for now, I'm just trying to water it better. Start with the basics. Sometimes I just water this in the shower, but since I wanted to give it fertilizer today, that's why I'm watering it in the sink with my watering can. I think that that should be pretty good. And then I just leave it to kind of hang out in the sink for a little while. Next, I have a thirsty alocasia cupria. This plant just looks so crazy lately. I don't know what the heck. There is a new growth point though right here so that's exciting because it's been a hot minute since this plant has grown and i've actually been using this as a cover pot for it Ooh, this pot which i think is really cute i mean it's gonna be hard to see because this plant's just crazy but i kind of like the contrast of the purple with the yellow anyways i'm gonna take it out of here to water it through
Like I said, I've been using these big jugs for pre-mixing my fertilizer water with mosquito dunks. So I just use it to refill my watering can because using this to water a plant, there's just not very much control. So I find it easier to just transfer the water to my watering can. I do have another one that's full though, so use this one up. I have my newest allo- or I guess, is this my newest? Technically my newest like full plant of an alopecia that I have. I do have some new corms, but this is the last full alopecia plant that I brought into my collection, I believe. And this is a bit of a rehab situation. I don't know what this is. I've had so many different comments of what it could be. Um, but this plant is finally growing, which is really exciting because it was in pretty bad shape when I got it, but I've just been kind of trying to nurse it back to health. And as you can see, there's a new leaf coming in there. I can't wait to see what that's gonna look like. And then I also have um, a new leaf coming in here as well and there's several like different growth points that are coming up too so i think that this plant is going to be just fine it's very exciting it is pretty dry though so i'm going to give it a water through All right, next up is my beautiful Begonia Maculata. I cannot get over this plant. Oh, she's so gorgeous and she's growing like a beast right now. This is a new leaf coming in, as you can see. And then this is a new leaf, this is a new leaf, this is a new leaf, um, this is a new leaf, and there's many more that are going to come in right away too. As soon as this hardens off a little bit more, I'm gonna take a cutting from this plant, prune it back a little and make it branch out and make it a little bit more full but yeah wow it's just so so stunning and it's pretty much I mean it's not bone bone dry but it's pretty darn dry so it's definitely time for watering gonna put my oh my goodness this just looks so where is the it used to have a chopstick to kind of hold it up <laughs> I don't know I don't even know oh my goodness okay I'm just gonna tie the petioles together a little bit like that, I guess, to have them a little bit more bunched. Why is it like going diagonal? Oh my goodness. This plant cannot be tamed, my friends. I, I don't know. But it does have a cute cover pot, so let's pop it back in there and just pretend that it's normal. Quirky little dude. All right, I got all of the plants put away back on top of the Millsbo Wide and the windowsill. That's where most of them were along there. So I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you so much for joining me along my random little in-between filming other videos, plant chores. I hope that you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. All right, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>